Now, here's the one thing that gets complicated between 6.4 and 6.3. In 6.3, you get your common denominator, and you leave it, and you simplify your expression. In 6.4, you are now solving an equation. All right, so you're solving for your missing value, you're missing the variable. So what happens now is when you're looking at your common denominator, you multiply every fraction by the common denominator to get rid of it. Now let me show you a simple example. So if I have this, 1 over x plus 2 thirds equals uh, 7 ninths, let's say. All right? And I want to get rid, I want to solve for that x. That's my goal, my intended goal here. But because of the way I've got this written, First of all, the x is in a denominator position, and second, I have fractions. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of my fractions. First of all, I hate fractions, right? So I don't want them. So I want to get rid of the fractions. So I'm going to multiply everything. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can find a common denominator and then multiply by the common denominator. Or you can multiply by each denominator individually if that's what makes it easy for you. So for example, if I do that method, I'm going to multiply everything by x, times this by x, this by x, and this by x. As long as I do it to everything, that's okay. So now, that leaves me with 1 here plus 2x over 3 equals 7x over 9. So I've gotten rid of my denominator of x. Now I'm going to multiply everything by 9. Okay, because what's common between 3 and 9? Is 3 going to 9? Yeah, so if I multiply by 9, I get rid of both, right? So now I'm going to multiply by 9 times this by 9, this by 9, and this by 9. That gives me 9 plus 6x, 7x. Right? Now I no longer have fractions. I can easily solve for my x value. Subtract 6x, 9 is equal to x. Okay? The second way in which I could have done this question. Is multiply by my common denominator. All right, so my common denominator for x, 3, and 9, well, what do you think it is? 9x, is it not? Is that the common denominator for it? So now, x cancels these into 9, 3 cancels into 3, 9's cancel. Back to what I started with, 9 equals x. So that's also, that's the quickest way in which we do this. Alright, so the first thing that you're going to do in all of these questions, in all of these questions, is you're going to factor first, should do your non-permissibles, okay? And then you're going to multiply by, every, by all the denominators to get rid of them. Okay? So let's look, page 264. <coughs> x squared plus 25. Or x minus 7. Plus x add 5 over 2. So 2x, x, I need to get negative 12, so that would be 
That's factorable? I don't think it is. Negative 18. No, it's not. So we'll just leave it as is. So here's what I want to do. Looking at all my denominators, what's my common denominator here? Okay. What's my common denominator? Well, basically, all you need to do is list the terms on the bottom. So what are my terms on the bottom? Two and x minus seven. So if I multiply everything by two times x minus seven, even you just like I just need um. I have my uh, two girls I want to survey, six grade 11 students for our math class. But if you're busy doing the lesson, I think I'd be getting on time. Uh, six grade 11s? I need three boys and three girls in grade 11s. What, that grade right away? No, well, I want to have it. I've got three months. Uh, let me just go. I've got about, I need about 10 minutes and then I can send. You sure? Just send three, any random three. Okay. Three and three, is that okay? Yeah, cool. for okay. sure. Okay, so we said two times x minus seven. That's it, right? That's all the terms that are on the bottom. That's why I factor first, because then it's easy to see what the terms are. So now I'm going to do this, 2x minus 7, 2x minus 7, and 2x minus 7. Again, you've been taught this your whole life. When it comes to solving equations, whatever you do to the left side, you have to do to the right side, and you have to do to each term. Okay? Now I simply cancel like that. Like that, and like that. I no longer have any denominators. So now it's just solving the exact same way you've always solved. So I go, I'm going to have to multiply this through. So that's 2x squared plus 50. And I have to FOIL that. x squared minus 2x minus 35 equals... 2x squared minus 12x minus 9. Questions? So we follow what I did there. <coughs> cancel out and multiply everything that I've got left that I cancelled out. Okay? Now, get everything to one side if I can, but I'll start by I'll simplify this side first. So that's 3x squared minus 2x plus 15 equals 2x squared minus 12x minus 9. Get everything to one side. x squared. Add 12x. Add 9. So far so good. Yeah. What's it factor to? x plus 6 x plus 6, x plus 4, x is equal to minus 6 minus 4. Okay? And then do we, do we, have we, we should have done our non permissibles. What is our one non permissible value? 7. Seven. Now, in theory, in theory, you should check these to make sure they actually work. But that math is actually a whole pile of work in itself. So you're just going to have to hope you did it right. Because you don't have time to go back and plug those in and look. Okay? Alright, so far? And that's basically as complicated as it's going to get. Let me see if I can find one more for you. Oh. It lied. <laughs> It's more complicated. I'll show you why in a second. Yeah, that's the basic one. All right, let's look at 266. These, you're going to have one or two of these questions on the test, which means you're also going to have one or two of these questions on your exam. These questions are difficult to comprehend for some, all right, because they're hard to set up. When they set them up for you, it's not a big deal. But for you to set up these questions is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. So let's look at the first thing here and 
this question 266. They suggest, and I suggest you do it as well, is set up a chart for each of these problems. Okay? And we have to kind of just practice to get good at it. All right? Andrea and Ferry are sharing a bag of popcorn at the movies. By himself, Ferry can eat the whole bag of popcorn in 20 minutes. Andrea takes 25 minutes to eat the whole bag. If they both eat the popcorn at their usual rates, how quickly will they eat the popcorn? Okay. So, looking at that chart then. Andrea takes her how long to eat it? 25 minutes, right? How much does she eat in one minute? One twenty-fifth of the amount of popcorn, right? So if it's if it's 25 minutes, the fraction of popcorn eaten in X minutes then is X over 25. We agree? Okay, so that means if she's eaten for six minutes, she's eaten six twenty-fifths of the popcorn. If she's eaten for 20 minutes, she's eaten 20 25 of the popcorn. Does that make sense? Okay, so with the same idea, what about fairy now? Time to eat the popcorn is 20 minutes. So after one minute, how much is he eaten? 1 20th. And the fraction of popcorn eaten in X minutes is X over 20. Okay. Now together, the time to eat the popcorn, we don't know what it is. That's our X value. All right. So after one minute, they've eaten 1 over X, or 1X of the amount of popcorn. Fair enough? And at the end, how much popcorn have they actually eaten? One bag. They've eaten a whole bag of popcorn, right? So to find out how long it takes them to eat it, we have to go X over 25 plus X over 20, and that's going to equal 1. Now, the math on these are quite simple. What's my common denominator here? <coughs> Sorry? That would be the, no, no that would be the least common multiple. What's the common? What, what are both 25 and 20 going? Yeah. 100, right? So I'm going to times each one by 100. So that gives me 4x, right? Plus 5x equals 100. 9x equals 100. x equals 100 over 9. That's how long it's going to take them to eat the popcorn. And you can put that into you can put that into uh, decimal form if you want, or leave it as is. All right, like I said, the math is easy. The hard part is actually solving these. Or, sorry, setting these up. Okay. All right, I'm going to leave this last one for tomorrow. I'll come back to it tomorrow. Um, you have to start doing these ones as early as questions 4, 5, 6, and 7 on that 6-4, but it, that, I don't think you'll get there today if you haven't finished all 6-3 yet. So you have time today to finish 6-3 and try and get done the first three questions on 6-4. would be the ideal uh, end game here. Okay? I'm going to shut the camera off and then I'll answer any questions that you have to answer.